I should say the model that most um, universities at the undergrad level use to demonstrate population genetics is the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Or the Hardy-Weinberg are the two men that literally from two different countries actually came up with the same hypothesis. And um, actually what we're going to talk about is how do you know if there is selection for a specific genotype. When you say selection for a genotype, does this genotype have an advantage in this environment? Uh, one class I ask, and I'll ask you, is there a perfect genotype? Is there? So why you say no? Because, you know, for the most part, if you say it was perfect, I guess it would survive anywhere. And that's the real reason I guess you would say no. Is because if you had the perfect genotype, it would fit in any environment. Of course, we know the environment really shapes the phenotype that's going to be expressed. So when you hear the word survival of the fittest, can you tell me what does that mean? When you hear survival of the fittest, what does that mean? Is that the one that's 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 the one that, that can make the most offspring and, and the longest Yeah, the party. one that can reproduce successfully. Whatever that is, is some uh, organisms, many mammals will give one birth uh, per uh, one offspring per birth. There are some mammals that give four, five, six, seven, eight offspring per birth, you know, like mice and so on. But this is true for plants or animals, so it's universal. So when you say survival of the fittest, it really indicates how, how, how successful the organism is that's producing offspring. Because if the environment is inadequate for reproduction, then that, uh, that uh, organism is going to disappear. Sometimes we understand why um, the environment has been more or less um, detrimental to certain genotypes, a certain organism. Sometimes we don't know what it is about the environment that causes one organism to produce very well and others not. So uh, survival of the fittest is tied to successful reproduction. They call it and viable offspring. Viable, is that the word that they use? Viable offspring, right, right. And um, I guess that reiterates that the offspring is born alive and going to stay alive. And so that, let's use that as kind of a model. So selection means that, meaning indicating that the organism has something in its genotype that gives them an advantage to this environment. In other words, um, some animals in a specific em environment would give the maximum amount of birth and it shows how healthy the offspring will be, and some do not. Some offsprings that they're still trying to figure out what's going on, they say the cheetah. The cheetah for some reason, the uh, amount of reproduction that will occur, or uh, has occurred, is decreasing. And uh, they've, they've been studying it and trying to figure out why uh, that is happening. And we have a number of organisms that are on the endangered species list, meaning that they're getting fewer and fewer and fewer for different reasons. Uh, so something is happening, whether they're being um, hunted or used excessively uh, or some other reason. So why should we be interested in why an organism is surviving, plant or animal? Why does that pique the scientist's interest? Why is that important? So what if cheetahs disappear? Why is that important? Because every animal lives in the food chain and we... we so you're saying one organism is on another. another. Is there another reason? That's a good one. Is there another reason? Can you give me another one? And that's a, that, that is one of the good ones as well. How about we find ourselves as humans in a situation like that where all of a sudden the number of offsprings that we produce are decreasing. We may have the solution based on what we find out with other animals. So it can happen to us 
as well as certain plants that we depend on. The, the cash crops, if you will, are corn and soybean. They are very, very huge cash crops. So we don't want them, uh, those to decrease if they all of a sudden are not producing as well. So that's an interest to find out why. So getting back to Heart of Weinberg, we can, Heart of Weinberg allows us to determine if a population is, if a gene is in equilibrium, meaning that the frequency of the gene does not change from one generation to the next. It continues to be the same. And I've included a couple of problems in your homework asking that very same question. Um, and that is, you have a question about squirrels and you know, the question is, is that population in equilibrium? Then I gave you a hypothetical question looking at Drosophila from generation to generation to generation and trying to determine if there's selection for a specific gene. I think that the genes that we looked at in Drosophila is wingless and normal flies, normal wings. And if there's going to be selection for or against the wingless, flies without wings. And you are to address, is there selection for it or selection against? If there's selection against, what will happen to the frequency of that gene? If there's a selection against wingless, what will happen if it stay the same, increase, decrease? What, what would you expect? What would be your hypothesis? Yeah, probably decrease. Because, number one, a male Drosophila has to do a mating dance. If he doesn't have that, those wings, it's very difficult to do the proper mating dance. And uh, so that would be one hypothesis saying that it will decrease. Will it disappear altogether? You have to do that experiment and see. How long will it take? There's mathematical models to determine that. So those are examples why we look at use Hart Weinberg equation to determine if one gene has an advantage of another. I gave you a number of pages to read and a lot of examples. Um, pretty redundant and I apologize for that, but I, I want you to understand what that means because on many standardized tests, I, I want to say just about all of them, but on many standardized tests, that question is asked. Is there selection for or use the Hart of Weinberg formula to determine the genotype? Along with, may only be one question, uh, X linked traits, that's all that generally shows up, as well as autosomal traits. Most of you do well with the autosomal traits, but the X link and the Hart of Weinberg usually trip you up. But there are just some basic things that you should remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are some basic tenets, if you will, that allows Hardy Weinberg to work, and I want to write those up. So the basic tenets of Hardy Weinberg, in other words, the rules that must occur in this in the population. Uh, the first one is random mating. These will be the tenets of the Heart of Weinberg um, um, in population genetics. <coughs> These are the things that must occur for you to evaluate whether a gene is in equilibrium or not, or whether you have selection for or against the gene. So that must be random mating. So by the way, Heart of Weinberg occurs with plants and animals. So Sometimes we get locked in on human and say that, um, uh, and, and not other organisms. But you can actually use Hart of Weinberg in human. <coughs> you could use that and say that one example is is there selection for or against, um, what can you use in humans that would be totally random? How about blood type? 